everyone ladies and gentlemen it gives us immense pleasure to welcome our next speaker for today's occasion dr nandadulal jana who will be delivering a talk on neural architecture uh, sir an overview sir is currently serving as an assistant professor in computer science and engineering department of national institute of technology durga dr jana did his best, uh, bsc in mathematics honors BTech and MTech in computer science and engineering from University of Calcutta, India, in 2001, 2004, and 2006. He received his PhD from Computer Science Technology Department of IIEST Sipur, India, in 2017. He has authored and co-authored more than 35 technical articles in journals and international conferences. Dr. Jana's key research interests include meta-heuristic optimization technique, evolutionary machine learning, deep learning, and their application to uh, protein structure prediction, computer-aided drug design, image classification, EEG signal graphics uh, classification, and speech synthesis. Sir, on behalf of Sikya or Anusandhan Dim to be University, I welcome you. to this fdp it would be the matter of immense pleasure for us to hear from you sir we hope that all the participant will get benefited at the end of this talk now may i please request you to deliver your talk thank you madam thank you so much and i uh, welcome to the respected teachers and uh, and also the participants and a good afternoon to all of you and i'll try to give an overview on the neural architecture sir and if you feel any kind of problem just interrupt me and ask me questions so i want to present this screen is it visible yes sir Hello? Yes, sir. It's visible. Okay. So <clears throat> the title of my talk is the Neural Architecture Search and Overview. So going to the detail of this, the uh, we will discuss or run through this talk the basic introduction of the Neural Architecture Search and why it is come and. Uh, the what is the impact of today's uh, research area and we also discussed about the deep neural network challenges all of you who know that the uh, today is the deep learning era era of the research area on various uh, many research domains then how we incorporate the deep neural networks and what are the challenges we are facing after that the what is neural architecture search why we are focusing neural architecture search then it, next we discuss the different components associated with the neural architecture search and up finally what are the possible future research directions that could be considered it in our research perspective so so as you know that this is the timeline of developing the artificial intelligence techniques or we can say the deep learning systems so in the 1940 the michael speed developed a model Which is basically inspired from our human nervous system. In our human being, there exist uh, many millions of neurons are there. How to, the best based on their characteristics of the connectivity of the neurons, they establish a mathematical model. This is the initial beginning journey of the artificial intelligence techniques. Then after that. Lots of years is going, and there are different types of models who are developed. And most remarkable study we have seen in 
this is you know, like the deep neural network. So deep neural network is different from the traditional machine learning. In the traditional machine learning, what we have seen, we are providing some data, then the manual feature extraction are there. Based on the manual feature extractions, we are incorporating some neural, neural architecture, which consists the minimum number of hidden layers. And based on this, we are classifying the or predicting some performance. Whereas in case of deep learning, that have the potential ability to automate feature engineering process. That means we are not providing any human intervention to extract the feature from the data. They are automatically extract the features from the raw image and finally predict the performance of classify the particular object, not predicting the object. That depends on how many number of layers are associated within the neural architecture. So these features, this type of model provides the automatic feature extraction methodology which stands from or which removes that conventional feature engineering process. Basically, this is a one kind of hierarchical feature engineering technique which transform or which extracts the features from low level to high level. They are considering with various kinds of operations which are associated with the layers of the network architecture. So, there are huge number of potential characteristics features associated with the deep learning for which we can consider the deep learning models to our research domain or to solve the various kinds of tasks. It, is, it can be applied easily in supervised, semi-supervised or unsupervised machine learning technique. And it consists of huge amounts of layers in a model that helps us to extract the features automatically. So that's why the automated feature extraction procedure is there. And it is also the potential ability to produce the high quality of results, that means prediction. They produce the high quality of results from the raw images. Capability of handling huge amount of data. Whatever we have seen in the machine learning, if the small instances are very suitable, but if you think about the thousands or two thousands data instances are there, then if we employ any kind of basic learning model, that and not appropriate results or the up to the marks results is not we are able to obtain. Whereas the deep learning model is able to get the uh, appropriate result. And it is well works on the unstructured data, that means the mostly on the streaming data, data streaming data, video clips, audio clips, any kind of speech was saying all time series kind of data. So due to this potential ability or the characteristics features, deep learning is highly applicable in the various kinds of research problems from computer vision to machine translation, speech synthesis, natural language processing, time series processing, and, and so in various fields. But it has the, some drawbacks. I will discuss later what are the main. Various types of models are developed to perform the various kinds of tasks. But if we think about the computer vision tasks, that time the convolutional neural networks is very effective. There are so many layers are there, different types of operations are there, as well as the 
the union of parameters are associated within the deep learning models. Another kind of model is recurrent neural networks models, which dedicated for time series data or the some kinds of sequencing data. It may be applicable for it to be applicable to natural language processing, speech processing, and so on. And UNET architecture is the developing architecture or the emerging architecture which is used for the image segmentation. So if we want to detect a particular object from the background of images, at that time we can employ this architecture. And finally, generative adversarial networks is widely used for image synthesis or to reproduce the some kinds of image. If we have some data, but this data is not sufficient to experiment, it may be possible to synthesize the data with the help of GAN models. And today's applications is uh, the drug design procedure. They are, they are designing the compounds, molecules, with the help of deep generative models. The, with the lots, the, this, the, what are the main components are lies in the deep learning models? Basically, we can think, we can say that deep neural network. There are mainly three parts are there. One is the architecture, hyperparameters, and parameters. Architecture means we are talking about the, the neural architectures. So, how what are the, how to design the architecture to obtain the best performance of a model? Already we have seen some models which are mostly depend on the manual. That means the based on problem specific domain knowledge and researcher expertise, they are incorporating so many layers parameters as well as hyper parameters to solve a particular task. There is no fixed rule then how many architect, how to design the architectures to get a optimum performance for a particular problem. So architecture is a crucial part of deep neural networks in which way we are arranged or type of layers to be there to compose a final model. And after that hyper parameters that are set initially before training, not updated during the training of a model. For example, if we think about the convolutional neural network, if there is several layers are there, in each layer hyper parameters should be the filter, kernel size, stride, pooling type, pooling size, and so on. Where parameters which are associated within the model, which initialize once during the once training process, and it will be updated during the training of the model. For example, learning rate of the model what are the weights are associated within the model? Uh, sir, voice is not audible. Uh, 
Hello. Now, now it is audible. From the beginning, it was not audible. Yes, sir, it, it, it just it just paused for the slide. It was audible from the beginning uh, for a few seconds. From this slide. From yes, this sir. Time? Okay. <clears throat> Due to successful availability of the various kinds of problems, the some challenges we are facing to the deployment perspective or the implementation perspective of the deep neural networks. The main crucial part of the designing deep neural network lies on the architecture design. Mostly, designing neural architectures need high prior knowledge and experience. That means this is totally dependent on problem specific and researcher expertise. The several developed models mostly increasing their depth of the architectures and using millions of parameters to solve a particular task with based on the problem specific domain knowledge. And they are not providing any clue or any way, then what will be the optimum path for designing the neural architectures? If we think about the MNST data set, there are lots of deep neural motifs or uh, uh, purpose to for classifying the MNST data sets. Though a single, this is the single task, but huge number of models are developed. They are considering the different number of layers, models, as well as the millions of parameters to tackle this. Then which is the exact model to a particular data set we don't know. And the Hello, sir. Noyaj is coming. Hello. Hello. Noyaj is already full. Already full. Okay. So the most of the promising models are mostly handcrafted which are taking the handcrafted means manually designed for performing a particular task. All these are the time consuming and laborious, in, laborious labor intensive work. Mostly these are provide the error code. Uh, it, it may be possible these models are not suitable for our data set source. And selection of hyper parameters is also a difficult because there is a huge number of parameter sets are there, which parameters is suitable for a particular data set, it is also need to be considered in our research. And another challenge that diverse and complex GL <coughs> models, deep neural network models, that means huge number of design options are there or huge number of architectures are available in the literature, as well as the huge number of parameters are there. Then for main challenge is to employing any kind of model to our study or the work, which will be most fitted, it is not known to us. As well as the, they consider it, a model or system where they implemented their model 
that cannot be implemented in our limited resources. So that restricts the deployment of the promising deep neural networks or deep learning models into our study. So we have in today's scenario, we have the so many GPU systems or any accelerated hardware platforms are there. However, but implementing or deployment of all kinds of developed models into our project, it's very difficult and challenging task to also. So to avoid all the these kind of challenges which are associated with the deep learning, the few years back, one technique is proposed by Hunter. This is known as the neural architecture chart. This is basically automatic design of architectures and parameters of deep learning models to attain, attain the best performance with using the limited resources in order to reduce the human intervention as much as possible. That means basically we try to design neural architectures along with the parameters that compose the deep neural network model automatically without reducing the human intervention. If we think about this block diagram, if we have the data set and based on this data set, the data set can be split into training data and test data. And depending on the training data, we just randomly consider some structure and this along with their parameters and this would be trained with the training data based on checking the performance of this model, we evaluate the or rank the architectures and next if it is not up to the mark then again we tune the architectures as well as their hyperparameters and again we evaluate this. This is the iterative process for finding the appropriate structure. Then up with some fixed number of iterations, we stop our procedure and the obtained structure is to be tested in the test data and we are able to get the performance or result. So neural architecture search is the cutting edge research topic with respect to deep learning to automate the design of architecture as well as is the parameters. Basically, we already know that the arch neural architecture which affects the performance and complexity of a model. So how we design this? Basically, this neural architecture search can be viewed as a non-convex optimization problem. So all of we know the basic structure of the convex optimization, everybody we know there will be the one global optima, whereas in non-convex optimization, there are so many local minima we get. From this, we are trying to find out the global minima. And obviously, this is the there is no fixed method to obtain the global actual global minima of a particular problem. The mass can be formulated as an optimization problem which is very complex, non-differentiable, as well as the non-convex and bi-level optimization. Bi-level means the accuracy of a particular model that depends on data data set can be split from training data and test data set. We are generating some architectures or set of architectures and that is belongs to some search space. There are so many architectures out there. 
taking each architectures and train this architecture on the training data and we report the path coordinates and we evaluate or repeated this few number of iterations based on this we try to find out the best appropriate architecture from the source space and this architecture can be tested on test data to produce the accuracy of the model so this is a very complicated optimization problem and today's scenario so going to the detail of the various techniques is employed to neural architecture search first we want to know what are the basic building blocks of the neural architecture search or sometimes the hutter says that the three dimensions need to be exposed with respect to neural architecture search these are the search space search strategy and performance estimation strategy search space defines the structure of architectures which can be represented in principle then what is the mean? principle means if we want to consider the convolutional neural network and if we say the input is there and convolution is there pooling is there and fine fully connected layer is there and next we consider the convolution layer then this is not well meaning because in convolutional neural network if the fully connected network is appear then there will be no any other convolution or pooling that we achieve so that's why when we represent a particular architecture of a deep learning model that must be well defined in principle that means meaningful network architecture must be represented and basically such depending on the number of layers that means the architecture or depth of the architecture the search space is depend and search space the size of the search space produce the difficulty for finding the best architecture next is the search strategy search strategy defines the methodology used to explore the search space that means if we have the some architecture search there then with using some operator we generate the architectures obviously that must be lies on within the search space so exploration of the architectural space need to be considered within the search strategy as well as the search strategy is responsible for finding the appropriate architecture and most important part components of the nas study is the performance estimation strategy which evaluate the performance of the neural architecture with minimum cost the basic objective of the performance estimation strategy is to achieve the performance of an architecture on unseen data the simple what is the simplest way of obtaining the performance means after generating the architecture we train the and train the architecture and validate it on the validation data then whatever the architecture is to be produced that can be produce the output of the or performance of the model but to train all the architectures takes huge amount of time as well as it is totally depend on computational resources if we have the uh, high end workstations then it will take less time and if we do the cpu system it will take a less amount of well, high amount of time to compute the performance of a particular model so this is the basic structure for the nas model such space is there and with 
such place is, means the we are representing the neural network architecture. After that search strategy, there is a search method which is responsible for generating the architecture and this architecture is to be evaluated by the performance estimation strategy. After evaluation of this result, next we produce the search strategy and next we check in. This is the overall question. And main time will be taken here to evaluate each and every architect. This is the very cumbersome or uh, time consuming task. To explore each and every component with their some basic properties. The search space, that means the, how we define or represent a particular neural network model or neural architecture. There are mostly two types of architecture that models are there. One is the chain structure neural networks, another is the cell-based architecture or block-based architecture. In cell-based architecture, the sequential arrangement of layers, that means if we think about a model, input is there, output there, exists the Million number of layers are there, each and every layer perform some particular operation. Then, how to compute this result of this output? Basically, the output of this result will be computed as the composition of functions. In the composition of L minus 1, composition of L minus 2, up to composition of L0. This is the so easiest or the simple architecture. Sometimes it may be possible in this chain structure network that the skip connections can be considered. And there are more than one layer should incorporate. So that time the input of a particular model, if the ith layer is there, input would be the no, output. No, output of the previous layer that will be concatenated to the concatenation operator. Sometimes if we say, for example, L0 output will be computed with the concatenation operator of the L8 and L9, whereas the L8 comes from L6, L4, and L4 is, takes the input as the output of the concatenation of the L2 and L3. There is the various mathematical derivations exist are there based on the output is computed. All these type of layer structure or representation is parameterized by the number of layers in basically huge number of layers may be considered. In earlier study, in deep learning, they are considering 100 layers, 150 layers, and so on. But what is the utility of this? number of layers, it's questioning us that how we select the number of layers. And type of operations every layer executed, if we think about this computation in the network models, the what are the layers represents each and every operation. Suppose the uh, convolutional operation, pooling operator and fully connected layer also there. Hyperparameters which are associated with this kind of layer filters, right and so on. All these informations are incorporated within the layer structure. Then how we represent this neural network to implement the model? That means that if we think about the implementing perspective, how to represent this? This is the one kind of SaaS space. So based on the the presentation of the architecture of a deep learning model, the search space will be different because if you take the less number of architecture layers, then the search space is lower. If you take the higher number of layers, the search space will be higher. Another <coughs> most important representation of neural network is the cell or block based architecture, which is basically handcrafted architecture and consisting of repeated motifs. The handcrafted architecture mostly differ from the 
chill like architecture it consists normal cell and reduction cell normal cell which preserves the dimensionality of the input and reduction cell reduce the spatial dimension of the given data if we think about this is the normal cell and this is the reduction cell and these two are preserved form a block or cell this is the if we form a cell and these cells can be stacked to each other to form a architecture if we think about the two net architecture it, it can be obviously observed that there are repetition of block or architecture which is there and these architectures that kind of architecture the <coughs> block architecture consists some normal cell as well as the reduction cell the researchers says that the this kind of representation of neural network have some advantages for solving various kinds of problems first thing is this kind of representation reduce the size of the search space because if we think about some small block and compared to the huge number of layers then it reduces the size of the search space that means the block representation reduces the size of the search space compared to the chain like structure of the neural network model another is easily transferred to other data sets suppose the alexnet is developed for the image net computation they have shown their potential performance if we consider that kind of block to our model without changing any kind of architectural search rather than the hyper parameters then it is beneficial to ours that's it we are not changing any kind of block structure so basically this belongs to the transfer learning concept transferring the blocks from one data set to another data set and the effect is the building nature of the cell based system that means the all the cells are block composed in a block that means the all the architecture and these blocks is to be repeated many times if this suppose if we consider this is the block and this block mm -hmm. is repeated here then no need to consider the different types of hyper parameters and parameter values in that case already we have selected here so just to transfer this block into this place so it reduce the computational time to reproducibility of the algorithm or performing any kind of task with the help of deep learning models that's why block structure is very much advantageous and each full design principle for handling sequence of data due to the nature of the block structure or the nature of building blocks it helps us to handling the sequence such as the lstm or any kind of the recurrent neural network model we can use simply the block to represent the total architecture so compared to the chain like structure and the cell based structure cell based provides the advantage as compared to the chain like structure but the main drawback is the implementation perspective it is very difficult to implement or represent in that it we will discuss how we represent here so already we discussed the chain like structure or simple dnn model or block block based dnn model but how to represent this if we think about this suppose convolution layer pooling layer fully connected layer and there the associate filter size is given and most of the researchers they are considering the binary bit 
that means the binary encoding schemes have been utilized to represent the neuron architecture. Then how it is possible? Suppose this is the filter size. If you think about the filter size 1 to 8, then to represent the 1 to 8, how many number of bits things will be required? 3 bits is sufficient for representing this? 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 7 is there, 0 to 1. Binary representation is 1. That's why finally they added the 1 to convert the decimal. Okay, similarly for this, similarly. So, the length that can be represented in the form of 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, and so on. To represent the convolutional neural network, suppose if you say that first position up to 12 bits is the convolutional neural network, after that 5, and after fully connected 11, then the total number of bits they will get the 570, 28, length of the bit <coughs> encoded position will be the 20. So this is known as the genotypic representation of deep neural network. From genotypic representation to we consider the phenotypic representations that can be acquired from the information in built in within the binary bit stream. So to study the representation of binary encoding scheme, this review paper is very much effective to representing various kinds of cell structure or simple DNA structure. Next important thing, the search strategy. How to explore or generate the architecture to achieve the Best one from all combinations of architectures. There are mostly three types of algorithms have been used. One is the reinforcement learning based search, region optimization based search, and evolutionary algorithm based search. Reinforcement learning, uh, uh, we know that the reinforcement learning totally based on the agents, viewers and the corresponding actions and the, the error, reward should be provided from the environment. That means if we randomly consider some architectures with some specific design, we provide some rewards based on their uh, performance value and repeatedly we iterate this process to obtain the result. Reinforcement learning shows the potential ability for obtaining the good architecture for a particular problem. Next is the Bayesian optimization based search. Bayesian optimization search is a mathematical inspired optimization technique, basically based on the Gaussian process and which is uh, useful for expensive problems expensive problems, that means the problems takes the huge amount of computational time to evaluate a particular solution. But surprisingly, it is very less efficient in the neural architecture such way because the Bayesian optimization totally depends on the distribution of data and this distribution of data in continuous domain. Agile Act, which is helpful for lower scale of data, that means the less number of variables. Today, some, I think in the 2019, there are some paper, they are providing some kernel function to enhance the performance of the vision optimization techniques to solve the neural architecture search problem. Finally, the evolutionary based search technique. In mostly we can say that this is the meta heuristic meta heuristic search. 
based on the nature of the linguistic search operations or selection operator or parameters, they are able to explore the lingual architectures throughout the architectural phase. That's why today the huge number of research is, start, is going on evolutionary based lingual architecture search. Again, we see how the reinforcement learning finds the best suitable architecture for a particular work. The first work was done in 2017. In reinforcement learning strategy, the generation of neural architecture represents an agent's action. Agent will be there based on the agent actions, the performance should be considered and based on the performance, you are will be provided. Action space, whatever the represent, that maps to the search space in neural architecture. Search. And the reward is to be estimated based on the performance for each and every architecture which is generated based on the action. Then this reward it is be calculated based on different policy representations within the reinforcement learning strategy. Based on different RL approaches, there are different types of policy. Policy are there, agent policy are there, proximal policy are there, proximal, maximal policy, gradient policy are there, proximity policy are there. Then how to represent the policy that means reward to be provided to the agent. This is the great impact of research. Because we don't know what policy measure provides the suitable reward to the particular agent. That needs to be investigated for using the reinforcement learning based strategy. Next is the evolutionary algorithm based strategy or meta heuristic based strategy. Obviously, we use the global optimization, not any kind of local optimization. We initialize the architectures. That means we have to consider the set of individuals. Individuals means each individual represent one architecture. And this architecture, from this set of architectures, we need to consider the parents' architecture. And based on the crossover and mutation operations, the architecture will generate some offspring of means the new architectures is to be produced. And this new architectures is to be evaluated through the evaluation technique and rank there based on their accuracy or some performance met metrics. Then repeating this process, this is the way of performing the evolutionary neural architecture search. That to know the fundamental things or to know the basic idea of how they are employing this review is the very much very good for beginners. <laughs> it is surprising that the after employing different kinds of techniques in the neural architecture search from random search to gradient based search, reinforcement learning search, Bayesian optimization search, but evolutionary based method provides the data results compared to others. As well as, it takes the less amount of time comparing to the other models. Times means in that case it will take to evaluate the performance of the architecture or uh, to train the trade, it takes the few number of GPU days. GPU days means that number of GPU into time, time taken by the search method. Huge number of GPU time to be elapsed for evaluating the architecture with the help of reinforcement learning or random search algorithm. Higher evolutionary algorithm reduce the time to evaluate the technique. 
Next is important part of crucial part is the performance estimation strategy. The SAS technique produces the architecture which maximizes the performance in terms of accuracy. But how to speed up the SAS process? To speed up the SAS process, we need to guide the SAS process and incorporated some strategy to estimate the performance of a given architecture. Because simple way to obtain an architecture performance, we train the architecture and evaluate it on the validated data set. Based on this, it produces the huge computational burden or computational time. To speed up this, we consider various kinds of techniques or incorporate the various kinds of techniques to speed up the search process to evaluate a particular architecture. The important factors which influence the performance estimation set the number of parameters which are associated with the model, millions number of parameters associated with the model then try to reduce this. Memory requirement to train a particular model with a huge large data set, the memory requirement will be required. Size of the data set, if the data set contains huge number of instances, that time it will take the huge time. And computational resources, if those who are designing a particular deep learning model with the help of the high-end computer systems or the quantum computing, then they provide the quick results compared to the those who are using the CPU-based computer systems. So performance estimations is very essential, which is influenced by this kind of parameters. Some research have been made to reduce the computational cost as well as speed up the evaluation strategy. They are using the weight sharing concept, reduce the training set, employing early stopping criteria, batch normalization and dropout. If you think about the, this is the standard neural network. During the training process, we need to drop the some connections between the layers or some layers to be omitted to enhance the evaluating a particular architecture. Reduce the training set means if we have the data set, then we consider the few number of the instances with the help of this few number of instances the model needs to be trained and according to we obtain the performance of the model. Early stopping criteria that means we fixed up some threshold value that after that time the iteration method will be stopped. Batch normalization which is associated also within the data set and the weight sharing means if we have some network which provides the best performance in earlier iterations that can be replicated into the various architectures and some connection is fixed, then no need to consider the or changing of weights or parameters to the fixed connections which are relay or continuously come from the previous layer. For example, if we think about a, some this is the architecture, and there are from this architecture two subgraphs are also two architectures are there. In this case, it can be easily observed that these are the links for this graph and these are the links. It is easily understand that some links are common. For example, from this link are common, this link are common, and this link are common. So no need to change the parameters of these operations. 
by reproducing the different star plus from the earlier the that means one kind of you can say this is the network morphology so weight sharing is possible so it reduces the evaluation time next another approach is published in few years back the progressive neural architecture sir this is known as the surrogate model based performance predictions if we have some architecture a1 a2 a3 suppose up to a10 for detector initially then in normal evaluation we are determining the some error value a1 a2 up to a10 then after next iterations we generate newly generate some ten architectures up to a10 then we measure or predict the error value with the help of this model just like a machine learning model surrogate models consist of some kinds of model or car fitting technique which predict the error value based on the error error value we can consider the generated architecture without explicitly evaluation of this architecture this is the promising research direction for employing and to do the neural architecture search so main challenges for predicting the performance of neural architecture search is that to reduce excuse me sir yes excuse me sir can you yes. explain the surrogate model once again sir surrogate model yes sir okay surrogate model so what we have seen in the previous thing surrogate model is suppose we have some model some data set data is there some up to some instances i want to i can is there then based on this some machine learning model we train and we are try to determine the output of this kind of model okay so this mod model is trained with the help of this data and they produce this out next from the perspective of this we generate new data some new data is coming up to 10 already model is generated with the help of some data so we employ this model to predict the output of this architecture Again, I repeat this. Suppose we have, we are obtaining some architecture. Suppose a one to a ten, with explicit evaluation on the fully training of the model on whole data sets. We are obtaining the error values to the corresponding architectures up to a one to a ten. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So to okay. when we when we train this model that time parameters are adjusted parameters of this model we are not whatever the neural architecture such only focus on the design of architectures and hyper parameters not on the parameters of the model yes sir in deep neural network parameters some weights are there these are not updated during the training so these will be updated during the training process and these parameters is the million number large number of parameters are there so we keep these parameters in a memory or we keep in mind next we generate the architecture and simply use this model with the help of this parameter and directly evaluate this and error of this the generated architecture e1 dash that means we are skipping the explicit training of the model understood sir understood thank you sir so that's why the surrogate model is very much is in a very promising research domain for reducing the uh or speed up the evaluation process So finally, the next 
framework composed the three phases of the three components of the mineral architecture. So this is the source phase, source strategy, and performance estimation. Combined, this is known as the mineral architecture. So this is not only single part is known as the mineral architecture. Combining process of combining these all these three is known as the mineral architecture search. So we are come to the, the possible research direction. Already we know the no three round theory. It was developed basically for the optimization algorithm perspective. That means there is no single optimization to solve all kinds of engineering optimization problems. So if we replicate or if we transfer into this neural architecture such problem, so there is no any architecture or the corresponding parameters of a particular model, deep learning model, which are capable for solving all kinds of problems. That is not like. So we need to design architectures without using human interface. That means we are trying to reduce the human expertise to design a particular deep learning model. There are some research directions, and all these are from my perspective. Suspense design. Suspense design means suspense is responsible for representing network architecture. And in which we have to represent this. So, how to record the new architecture to fulfill our requirement? There may be the binary bit stream. And mostly this is known as the combinatorial optimization. It may be possible to use the continuous value also, and it may be possible to integer value also. And just few months back, the heart of the development of the NAS produced the DE NAS. They are employing some continuous encoding concept. To design the mineral architecture or the mineral architecture. So there are lots of scopes for encoding schemes and how to represent the model. And next thing it could be that is the fixed number of length encoding scheme or variable length encoding scheme. That means I want to say that if we think initially fixed up in our model 28 layers will be there. And the number of total layers should be 20 convolution pooling and fully connected layer. So we restrict the limitation of the such space. So if we increase the spoke visibly, that time the encoding step is not fixed, that, that will be variable in length. Then fixed length provides sometimes provides the good results, and variable length provides the good results. Then which in Length that means the depth of the architecture will be most suitable to a particular task that needs to be investigated. Next is search strategy selection. There are various types of search methods are there from reinforcement learning to Bayesian optimization, gradient based evolutionary computing. Then, which search method is very effective for optimal network design? That can be a good research direction, fitness landscape analysis. That means characterizing the or identifying the features of the neural architecture search problem in a landscape. If it is consists the multimodality, then it may be possible to have employing any non-convex optimization technique compared to the gradient based method because gradient based method provides the global op the local optimum solution that means it is suitable gradient based optimization technique is suitable for the complex problem 
and it is not suitable for the non-convex problem. That's why, why the researchers are considering SGD, stochastic gradient disease, because they are addressing the non-convex light problem. That's why they incorporating the stochastic gradient disease. The next is the algorithm configuration. After considering the algorithm search techniques, there are lots of there are various kinds of settings to be considered to improve the search base. How to initialize the architectures? Encoding scheme is different from the initialization of the architectures. That means if we think about the two variable continuous problem x and x2 and its right between minus 5 to 5, then if it is the continuous domain, there is the infinite number of problem points are there. So if we think the hard space or design of network, then the number of layers would be right from 1 to uh, sorry, uh, 3 to 1000, uh, 100. Then there are lots of combinations of uh, parameters should be there, hyperparameters should be there. Then how to initialize the architecture in such a way that the whole the search space is to be explored properly and try to avoid the premature convergence. That means that if it is stuck at local optima, then it's produces the premature convergence. Next parameter settings. Parameter settings, these parameter settings is responsible for such techniques. Each and every algorithm associated with some parameters. So, what is the impact of parameters for solve, searching the architectures? That can be considered in our research. And finally, most important thing, the exploration, exploitation, test of. That means when we employ any kind of optimization technique to a particular problem, that time we need to balance between exploitation and exploitation in such a way that to obtain the optimal data. If it is provides the high explorations, but that time it may be produced a premature convergence or not with results. And high exploitation start at local optimum. So that's why the, we need to incorporate some mechanism or concept which balance the exploration and exploitation of the architectural search space. Next is the performance estimation strategy. Then in which way we boost up or speed up our performance estimation strategy? How to, this is the main challenge for neural architecture search. Sometimes the instant selections, there will be the loss of techniques or the um, proposal is there to consider the few number of instances for train the neural network and validate it and accordingly obtain the performance of the archi generated architecture. And one direction could be the Sarotin model already we told you. And statistical quality control. This is the this comes from the statistics which measures the quality of a architecture is to be evaluated or not. This is the basic, it may be considered, but to the best of my knowledge, one can use till date. The, if we have the architecture A1 to A10, then based on the architectural features or the parameters, we need to estimate or find out the quality that this architecture is to be evaluated or not. Evaluated or not means it's to be trained or not. Okay. Then if we think about the theoretical study or from the theoretical perspective, to understanding working principle of the each and every component. That means such strategy, strategy, such techniques, as well as the performance estimation strategy also there. Mathematical convergence proof. 
mathematical convergences which uh, mostly rely on the such techniques it can be shown that uh, it can be already proved uh, that the gradient weight methods have some well defined convergence proof of all convergence techniques but uh, if we use the evolutionary algorithms it's need to prove that it is converge well or not stability analysis also another thing stability means that the algorithm is stable if we are using some optimization algorithm obviously evolutionary algorithm 1a and in tested in our system and someone using this algorithm their systems it may be differ their performance or accuracy from our model because the stable it's not varies from system to system depending on the parameter sensor so, so stability analysis is very much important parameter sensitivity analysis what is the impact of the parameters that can be interested to the some statistical measures or some mathematical measures and next future applications means we are thinking about whatever the already developed mesh already developed some kinds of models mostly on the convolutional neural network models it there it is the diverse field of deep neural network models rnn or then generative auto encoder and so on. so it may be employed this neural architecture such concept to the different kinds of deep learning models also. and nas tested or validated or experimented mostly on image classification tasks what so that means the benchmark data sets it may be possible to explore the different kinds of other perspective for example the signal processing or in uh, natural signal language processing time series data or any kind of field beyond the image related problem performance measures mostly when we evaluate the generated architecture that time we need to keep in our mind our error Value or the accuracy, but there may be some kinds of metrics are there: precision, recall, refund score, and so on. A different kinds of measures need to be considered to evaluate the performance of the model. And combining all of these with the help of multi-objective optimization for evaluating the performance of the generated architecture is really effective in such a direction. So we are discussing the some potential research directions and whatever this we are in our students that means my students are focusing mostly on the selection of effective search strategy. There are different types of strategy. They are considering some methods based on this they are selecting which method is suitable and uh, recently we are produce or already submitted a paper down of the previous journal paper and this neural architecture such based on the particle swarm optimization video and this uh, dominated the earlier some evolutionary based model as well as the handcrafted models also and we also focused this is the our result perspective uh, our research domain that means we are focusing currently reduce estimation cost we try to reduce this estimation cost by employing some surrogate assisted model or instance selection method to speed up the search process of a particular method and sometimes we can consider the weight inheritance or network morphology method that means if we are obtaining a particular network architecture through the NAS technique from this base network architecture we apply the network model and generate different types of network architecture again we train this architecture and they produce the performance 
and it is not necessarily to that this after morphism that time the architecture the performance is 82 percent after training the architecture training this more architectures produce the different accuracy and among these we select the best architecture with respect to the performance again this best architecture is to be more and so on we try to incorporate in our coming research and to study or to know these neural architecture search these are the best treatment or the best um, beginner study for knowing the neural architecture search these are the research teammates they also need mostly working on the original architecture such as here first to prepare in this slide also and we are discussing a lot of things and uh, Sandeepon is uh, working on deep learning team and Rijit also in tech students he is right now he is a uh, student in Spain working on the organization so I struggle if you have any questions Hello. 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 Yes, sir. I am completed Hello? my lecture. Completed. Yes, Finish my. Yeah. Okay. So if you yes, have sir. any question, then ask me. Okay. Any questions? I request the participant if they have any questions, please ask. <clears throat> Sir, good evening, sir. Uh, good evening. Uh, sir, I have one question, sir. Uh, sir, how to calculate the total number of learning parameters in a deep learning network, sir? Total number of parameters. Learning parameters, yes, sir. That depends on the how uh, design of the hyperparameters. See, uh, the parameters means thinking about the. Uh, Weight values, weights are there. Suppose just a minute, one thing. Okay, in deep plan, total number of the convolution, and then what will be the convolution filter size? Depending on the filter size, the weight should be there. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Listen, sir. Okay. Yeah. So, depending on the filter size, the weight weight should be there. Yes, now, sir. Then, how many number? If we have the filter size three cos three, if we have the uh, size of the filter is uh, three cos three, then the total is the nine weights are there. And if we use the fifty filters are there. Then the total number of weights is equal to 9 into 50 are there. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then similarly, the in convolution layer, pooling layer, depending on the number of uh, hyperparameters or the selection of parameters, we need to compute the total number of parameters in small scale deep neural network on says the million number of parameters also and we should also keep in our mind that the hyper parameters and parameters these two are totally different okay sir okay sir Now I may request uh, the participants if they have any question, they may ask for our guest. 